What's up, it's Zeno, and I'm back like I left something. Coming to you with the UVA team to talk all things COVID and news on grounds. Last week, the university made several announcements about testing before the Thanksgiving holiday, J term, and the spring semester. More details on these topics are rolling out in the coming days and weeks, so long emails are back like they left something too. Keep an eye on the return to ground site for updates and FAQs. All right, it's time. All the months of talk, campaigning, and voting initiatives have led up to this moment. The election is finally upon us. It's kind of like the final showdown between Fire Lord Oza and Avatar A. Sorry, that was an Avatar Last Airbender reference. It was a show watched by students as kids. Dad jokes for me have been at an all-time high this week. It's the only thing that's getting me through Zoom. Anyway, fourth year Hannah Koizumi, head of legislative affairs for your student council, has been working hard with her team to get students out to vote and reminds us that if you haven't mailed your absentee ballot yet, try to drop it off at the registrar's office ASAP. The last day of in-person early voting is Halloween, October 31st. Election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Polling places will be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you do not know your polling location, check out this link. Free transportation to the polls will be provided on the day of the election at Buford and Johnson precincts. Pickup will be from 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. in front of Thornton Hall. If you need transportation to the polls on election day, student council is offering rides to polling places, but you have to register first. All students will get an email from Hannah about this and other voting tips Sunday, so keep an eye out. It is important to have a plan to get out and vote. The UVA team knows that the current climate is stressful right now, so we have a special guest to help keep your sanity. Fourth year Super Yogi Nia Augustine will give you some tips and tricks on how to mind your mental space this election season. Hi everyone, my name is Nia and I'm the more mindful half of Zeno. Today I'll share a few tips to get you through your election stress. Tip one, limit your intake of news and social media first thing in the morning. Instead of reaching for your phone when you wake up in the morning, reach for an affirmation. It can look like writing an affirmation before bed and putting it under your pillow, or you can simply say it out loud when you wake up. An example of some can be, I have all that I need. I am enough. It will all be okay. Second, practice acceptance. Try self-suiting strategies like taking a walk, doing a compassion meditation, yoga, listening to music, or whatever you find helpful. UVA offers some of these resources free at the Contemplative Sciences Center. They have a host of events happening on their website and on their Instagram page. If you want to see me again, you can also catch me hosting week two of my series, Breathing Through a Pandemic. Lastly, surround yourself with people who support you and make you laugh. Keep in contact with supportive friends, family members, neighbors, or coworkers through the next several weeks. If you do decide to watch the election night news coverage, try to watch with a friend or family member who supports you and makes you feel safe. My parting words, while it may seem like the world is in chaos, it is important to know that you are still yourself. You are still human and you are still loved. Back to you, Zeno. Sheesh, now I just want to bake cookies and listen to Frank Ocean with a facial cleansing mask. Dean Groves, who is filling in for President Ryan this week, is here to give us a few more updates. Hi everyone, this is Dean Groves, filling in this week for President Ryan. President Ryan spoke last week about our plans for J-term and the spring semester, our enhanced testing, and important considerations regarding travel home for Thanksgiving. This is important information to keep in mind as you make plans. It's also critically important that you be fully compliant with all prevalence testing and when asked by the Virginia Department of Health in contact tracing. Now, on the COVID-19 prevention front, our numbers have continued to move in the right direction. I'm filming this on Wednesday night, and at this point we have 59 active COVID cases, of which 46 are students, and are utilizing less than 3% of our isolation spaces and less than 5% of our quarantine spaces. Big improvements over our September numbers. I'm told that COVID hospitalizations at the UVA Medical Center also remain low, which is excellent news for our entire community. Of course, while we might wish it was otherwise, we can't rest on our laurels. You've likely seen the headlines of what some are calling a third wave of COVID cases in the United States and other parts of the world. On Tuesday, the New York Times reported the U.S. had seen more than 500,000 cases the previous week, a record number. Germany just announced the closure of restaurants and bars, and France now has a 9 p.m. curfew for much of the country. Gains previously made in containment 
are now eroding in many places. So in short, we are not out of the woods by any means. It's critically important that each of us continues to build on the great work you have done thus far to keep case counts low, and in particular, after we saw a spike in cases last month, and additional public health restrictions had to be imposed in response to that spike. Now, I speak every day with students. It's kind of in my job title. And I know this has been a challenge and a sacrifice for each of you. We are now a month away from the end of the in-person portion of the fall semester. And this would be a very bad time to undo all that has been done thus far to keep everyone safe. So please keep wearing those face masks, the new fall fashion statement, and maintain social distance of at least six feet whenever possible. Keep any gathering to 10 people or less. Avoid all unnecessary travel and visitors. What we are doing is working, so let's keep it up. Now, I'd also like to stress the need for you to get a flu shot very soon. Flu season is upon us as the temperature turns colder and we spend more time indoors. The CDC recommends that you get a flu shot in September or October each year, and many of you may have already done so. If you have not, please understand that it is not too late. This is one of those better late than never moments in life. Students may get a flu shot at the Student Activities Building next to Scott Stadium when you go for a COVID prevalence test, or by making an appointment with Student Health and Wellness on Brandon Avenue by using the Healthy Who's Patient Portal, or by calling 434-924-5362, and of course at most local pharmacies or with your primary care provider. It's particularly important to get a flu shot at least two weeks before going home to be with your family if such a trip is in your plans, as you do not want to carry the flu home to your family. And as you would with any flu season, but especially with COVID-19 ever present, wash your hands frequently. Now, let's talk Halloween. I know some of you look forward to Halloween as a time to go out and socialize, but we're living in a COVID world right now. One super spreader event, such as a decent sized party or a gathering, could quickly undo a lot for which we have all worked. If you choose to gather with a small group of friends this weekend, please make sure to adhere to our COVID requirements in all respects. As my colleagues in health promotion say, no costume is complete without a mask. I've emailed students earlier today with other important safety-related tips, so please pay close attention to those. With the end of daylight saving time this weekend, it'll be darker earlier in the evening, so keep that in mind as well. The national election is next Tuesday, in case you haven't noticed. I know many of you have already voted, and that's terrific. If you are waiting to vote on Tuesday, please make sure to plan ahead so you get to the correct polling station in plenty of time to vote. Zeno has some good information to share on this for students. Now, I know I'll be at Monticello High School bright and early Tuesday morning to cast my own ballot in this election. Now, many students are too young to have experienced the 2000 national election when the outcome of the presidential vote remained unclear for several weeks. It is possible, given the way individual states count all votes, in particular early votes, absentee ballots, and provisional ballots, that a final outcome in this election may or may not be entirely clear Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. It's important to be prepared for a variety of potential outcomes and the stress that may come from that initial uncertainty. The 2000 election, ultimately decided by my former home state of Florida, where less than 600 votes separated the candidates, also shows the critical importance of every single person getting out and casting their ballot. Please vote on Tuesday. Now on election night, some of you may choose to gather to watch the returns together or to come together outdoors. As with Halloween, it's critically important that we stick to the public health requirements and maintain physical distancing. This has been an unusual year in so many respects but we must continue to protect everyone in our community, even in emotional times. Now wear those face masks, try to maintain appropriate distancing as you gather together on election night or afterwards. So thanks for everything you are doing. I look forward to us successfully closing out 
a fall semester that, to be honest, none of us will soon forget. Hang in there, stay safe, and go Hoos. Now back to Zeno. Thanks, Dean Groves. Now before we move on from virus news, this week we checked in with Dr. Mohan Nod Carney. He told us more about UVA's community testing program, which is providing free COVID tests to the Charlottesville community, in addition to all the testing on grounds. Let's hear a little bit more. The UVA Health System is providing uh, outreach testing for COVID-19 to our community members. We're trying to reach populations that have traditionally not had as good access to COVID testing. So we're going out to several different community uh, sites, including uh, Church of the Incarnation off Rio Road and uh, Mount Zion First African Baptist Church near the X building, in addition to two additional sites on Wednesday and Thursday that are often determined by communities in need. So we're doing about 300 tests per week, about 100 at each of uh, three to four sites. We've especially set up these testing sites for community members as opposed to students or employees of UVA, trying to reach areas that have traditionally not had access to good COVID testing because of potential barriers to coming in for testing, either fear of contracting the virus or just traditional barriers to access. And what we're finding that in particular the Latinx population has had a higher rate of positivity than some of our other neighbors. So we'd like to be able to identify hotspots that we can help with social distancing and other interventions or wraparound services. Things like providing uh, cleaning supplies, sometimes food, help with medical bills or medicine also working with employers to help them understand when patients who test positive can come back to work, which is so important for folks. So if you're having any difficulty accessing community COVID testing, we'd really love to see you out at our sites. You can see where we're testing through the Virginia Department of Health website, and we are very excited to help the community with the COVID-19 testing. Thanks, Dr. Nick Carney. That's great to hear. For our next segment, take a look at how Sam and others are staying in the spirit of the holiday, but protect your sternals from the laughs. You'll get this after the video, it's, it's fine. Hi everybody, my name's Sam. We just bought 15 pumpkins and we're handing them out. Let's see what people make with them. Let's go. What are you carving here? Oh yeah, I made a little stencil earlier. So I'm gonna put my address in between the little V logo. Your address? Yeah because I couldn't come up with anything else. So if you have any better ideas, let me know. No, I don't. I think I'm gonna go for a plant. Well, so it's gonna be like a pot with like the leaves coming out of it. Okay, I'm making a witch, but I realized that the sizing is not matching up the pumpkin. So I'm gonna freestyle it. I see. I'm doing a boat. So a I'm boat. just doing like a sailing ship. I think the, the term for that is the uh, sternum. On the boat. Sternum? What is that? What's the what's the front of the boat? Well, this is just an outline to cut around. Oh, okay. I feel like they may have accepted sternum if you weren't here. Have you considered maybe a picture of my face for the pumpkin? With the mask or without the mask? I think with the mask. With the mask. So you can have a socially responsible pumpkin. Now, be honest. Are you a little grossed out? Well, I think once I start taking like the guts out, oh, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think that's the scientific term for it. How do you feel about the holiday of Halloween? I love Halloween and nobody oh. has to be like part of a certain religion. Yeah. I just feel like everyone's included. It's a super inclusive holiday and uh, the weather is always great. It's a beautiful fall day today. Beautiful day on a beautiful fall day. Beautiful fall day. Beautiful day in the fall. It's a beautiful autumn day. I'm listening to Usher and I'm just vibing with the pumpkin. It'd be cool if you maybe had a dedicated speaker you could put in the pumpkin <laughs> and then it's singing Usher tunes out, out of the pumpkin. You know, pumpkin. that would actually be, Yeah. that can maybe make that work. That idea is on the house. You were talking about sternum earlier, so we're just continuing the heart health theme. I think I've found the narrative for this video for you all. <laughs> we need one desperately. It's a witch. It's a classic witch. witch. This is like a small nose, the hat. Oh, the girl with the cape. Yeah, this is this is my girl. I think the art term for that is negative space. Are you carving a pumpkin today? <laughs> this is journalism gold. It's getting tiring. Our, our forearms are almost out of gas here, but there's still a long way to go. You're gonna be ripped by the end of this. Oh yeah. So checking in on Ed, the fierce competitor. He's got the sandwich. He's already on to his first lunch break. He's doing great. The pumpkin, nowhere to be found. What from your past maybe makes you good at, at 
just carving through it so fast. Finger dexterity, bowling. Bowling. <laughs> Well, there you have it. We got to see some innovative masterpieces, some old classics, and everything in between. And either way you carve it, it's gonna be a happy Halloween. Yes, it is Halloween, but we're still in a pandemic. So remember, gather in groups up to only 10 people and remain socially distanced. Look on the bright side. It should be a little bit easier to wear a mask, right? Hit the UVA team on Instagram or email us at uva at virginia.edu with questions, concerns, and good news. This has been Zeno, and I'm out like a light. I do this for my goddaughter. For my mother. My family. For my grandma. Honey and Papa. My grandma. She's never missed a home game. My team. My team. The community. Charlottesville. For Virginia. I do this for the world. I do this for UVA. I do this for you. Stop the spread. Wear a mask. Wahoo wah. -wah. wah, -wah.